gets, he gets invited to teach. And so he goes in there. And like I said, we know he had the authority to do it. See, when Jesus is preaching, they were amazed. We saw that in the scriptures. Everyone was amazed at his teaching. They were amazed at his wisdom. They were amazed at his authority. They were amazed by his miracles. We see that in the scripture. They all were amazed at this guy. Kind of like I was when I went to youth camp and I saw the worship. It blew me away. When you first got saved, you were amazed that God loved you so much that he died for you. But then something happens to us and something happened to Jesus. You see, when we first get saved, we're like this. Every little thing Jesus does amazes us. Every song speaks to us. The scriptures come alive. It's new. It's fresh. We are a miracle and we owe it all to God. I asked the first service a while back, and I'll ask you, when is the last time you saw a miracle happen in your life? Can anybody name it? I can tell you. You woke up this morning. You're breathing. You got arms. You got legs. You got oxygen in your lungs. That is a miracle from God that we have overlooked every day of our life. Because all of a sudden, most of us have been to church our whole life, and God isn't amazing anymore. We've made God common. Just like his hometown has made him common. But then, see, we see in verse 3, here's what happens. A guy says, hey, ain't that the carpenter's son? Ain't that the son of Mary? Which they just disrespected him, because Jewish custom says what? You always call the boy after the father's name. And so here they are disrespecting him. They said, isn't this the son of Mary? It's amazing how all of a sudden in one verse, miracles are getting done. He's got authority. All of a sudden, someone recognizes him. They make him common. And the word says that Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. They resorted to ridicule. Ridicule is the final refuge of a small mind. They called him son of Mary. This was never done in society. To call a boy by the son of his mother was to imply that his mother was either a harlot or the people didn't know who his father was. The people were calling the birth of Jesus into question. Of course, the people that day rejected the notion that Jesus was born of supernatural means to a virgin. They consistently called his birth into question. So here they are. One verse later, and I, this guy ain't real. I know you just did all these miracles. I know you got all this authority. This ain't real. They made him common. They took offense to him. They were scandalized that a man who came from a background like Jesus could do such things as he had done. You see, they didn't deny anything. They just despised him for it. How could someone from Nazareth be this smart, have such authority and wisdom, and do all these signs? We're just common people. How can Foster Street start a whole other campus on the other side of town? We're just common people. We're not amazed by the fact that we can reach hundreds of people through prayer and faith because we look at ourselves and say, we're just common people. We're just teachers. We just have normal nine to five jobs. We're common. And we're not amazed by what God can do in our lives. See, Nazareth was only a small town, about 500 people, and they had a reputation. Where you grew up, the city or place that you have has a reputation, no matter how big or small it is. I grew up in Eden. Eden is known for two things. It has two rivers that run downtown, and it's got Miller Brewing. That's it. Every city has something. Denton has the threshers. When I first moved to Denton, they had the joke, we were going to build a town here, but we didn't. <laughs> that was their joke. When I moved to Asheboro, my kids were not going to Asheboro High School. They said, we're staying at Wheatmore. We're going. I go, why? They said, because Asheboro is Trashboro. I mean, every city has something. Vegas is what? Sin City. New York. The Big Apple, every city, no big or how small, has something that they are known for. We know that Nazareth had a bad reputation among the people by, if we look in John, Philip found Nathaniel and told Nathaniel, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, one the prophets foretold, Jesus, the son of Nazareth. 
Everybody's excited. Nathaniel has one line. One line in the entire New Testament. And we all quote that one line. Can anything good come from Nazareth? They made him common. We make God common all the time by the way we worship, by the way we pray, by the way we come in, in the house of God. We are not amazed by what God has done in our life because we're so used to him bailing us out, we've made him common. Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. This is the only time we see Jesus amazed and it had to do with the lack of the people. The people had forgotten and had gotten so accustomed to Jesus that they weren't amazed by him anymore. The same truth holds today in the American church. We have made Jesus so common that our lives, we miss our miracle every day because we cannot remember how great he has been to us. We expect him to be great to us. It's an honor that he has done this for us. Our service and our worship are missing out on power. We're missing out on the miracle. We're missing out on blessings because we come in here every day and we make God common. You go back to Charles's message last week. Tell me you're saved. We are like, yeah. Can you tell me about the day that it happened? Can you tell me about your conversion? And for most of us, it's like, whoa, no, I can't. It's because it's common to us. And it's a great trick of the devil to make all this seem so common. We need to go back to time when Christ first saved our souls and the excitement that we felt. We need, for me, to go back to youth camp. That when that band cranks up, I don't care if it's victory in Jesus. I don't care if it's just as I am. I don't care if it's lying in the lamb. I'm not singing to you. You're not singing to me. We're singing to God. And when you really look at it, are you giving your best to God when you worship him? Or are you more worried about who's sitting beside you because all of a sudden, you're not amazed. It's common. The people made this mistake and they, they lost everything. We need to go back big time. Stop missing your miracle by making Sunday morning and God common. There's a story goes in Germany. There was a madman. Madman went to this church for a month in a row. And the madman would walk in and they would have worship and the madman would run to the very front and all he would yell is, God's dead. God is dead. God is dead. And of course they would escort the madman out. And the next week what happens? The madman comes in. God's dead. God's dead. God is dead. And what they do? They escort him out. The third week, what does he say? God's dead. God is dead. God is dead. Escort him out. The last Sunday. You can come on, Dean. God is dead. God is dead. God is dead. And finally, the pastor asked him, Dave, leave him where he is. Why do you think God is dead? He said, it's simple. God's people are dead. And the man just walked out the door. Does that hold true for us? Have we made God so common that we're not amazed by him and he's dead in our life, he's dead in our church, he's dead in our service? Here's what happens when you make God common. He doesn't stop working. He just goes on. You look at the end of the scripture, it says this. They, he was amazed by their lack of faith. He couldn't do any miracles. So he went from village to village and started teaching again. And he started performing more miracles. I told you at the beginning, he took his disciples for a reason. The reason was this. He knew he was going to get rejected. But he wanted to show his disciples, when they reject me, guess what? We're going here. And we're going to be, we're going to persevere and we're going to work and miracles are going to happen. If we stop being amazed by what God is doing at Foster Street, if we stop by being amazed at what God is doing in your life, 
chances are God is leaving your village, he's leaving our village, and he's going somewhere else. Remember, Jesus took his crew and he taught them a valuable lesson. You don't stop at rejection. It's just a redirection. You don't make God common. You stay amazed because God is doing something great in your life. Let's pray. Dear God, we just thank you for this day, Father. Dear God, we want to be amazed by you. Dear God, we come in here week after week after week after week, God, and we have made you so, so common. But God, today it stops. Charles challenged us last week, Father. I'm challenging us this week, God, that we look, we pray, and we stay amazed at who you are in our life, God. Dear Father, if there's anyone who needs prayer, the altars are open, God. But be with this worship as we give to you. We lift you up. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And all God's people said, let's worship.
Yes, I am. God is good. Time. You guys may be seated. I haven't forgot about the offering. I know I got people waving my money at me up there. I thought, man, I feel like I'm in the club or something. People throwing, hey. Hey, here's what we're going to do. Uh, starting this week, we're really just getting you prepared for next week. Because we're relaunching, we're going to start doing the offering at the end. So we haven't forgot it. Ushers, you can come on up forward. So and what we're doing in this process is we want to get Charles out of here about 10 till 10 so he can get over to Central. So that's why we're moving the offering to the end. Also, tonight, youth group, 530. Uh, plan on being there. Next week is our launch at Central. Be in prayer. Because God is going to do some amazing things over there. Amen? Amen. Let's pray for it often. Dear God, we just thank you for this day, Father. Dear God, keep us amazed by you. We love you. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And all God's people said.